Hello traders. Let's take a look at the featured stock from yesterday and then let's find a new one. My goal is to set you up with some great trades and I hope that you'll return the favor by subscribing to my channel and by posting your comments. You don't want to miss these trades so make sure to turn on your notifications. Let's get started. We are two and a half hours into trading. It is Wednesday, March 24th. Hello traders. Let's take a look at yesterday's pick. Then let's take a look at the market and then let's see if we can find some good trades here today. Yesterday's pick was Google. You can see this horizontal support that we were leaning on. QQQ has been down today, NASDAQ 100, but Google has actually been higher than yesterday's close. Relative strength. I still like the stock. We'll go into a five minute chart. And there you can see Google is up on the day. QQQ, a little bit soft today because bonds pulled back just a little bit. So you can see QQQ is lower than the open. That's relative strength. NASDAQ 100 down, GOOG up, relative strength. That's why we like that position. Before you can get aggressive in tech, we've got to make sure that TLT is able to close above that 138 level. I've been referencing it. We want to see it make a higher close today. Pulled back a little bit, had some nice gains yesterday, and now it's starting to get its sea legs, and it's starting to come up to yesterday's price level. Let's go to the daily chart. We've had four positive days in a row. One, two, three, four on TLT. This would be a nice positive day if we can close above that 138 level. I think you can start to nibble on tech. What does that mean? That means don't go out and buy calls in tech. Go out and sell out of the money bullish put spreads. You'll be able to distance yourself from the action. Option implied volatilities are relatively high because tech stocks have been selling off. So TLT really needs to finish above that level. Then I think you can start to dip your toe in the water. Let's take a look at one other thing. You know, it's puzzling sometimes to look at the market and go, what the heck? What is the problem du jour? It seems like every day there's a problem. This week it's higher interest rates. This week maybe the stimulus bill doesn't get passed. There's always something nagging at the market. It's important to take a look at what's happening on a global basis. We've got Europe currently experiencing higher coronavirus cases. Most of Europe is shut down. That's weighing on their markets. We also have Chinese stocks selling off. This is the FXI. You can see how it tested the 200-day moving average today. That is a big drop. That is a 16% drop from the high. That is an official correction. Why is China important? Because their economy opened up eight months ago. They are a bellwether for the global economy simply because they've got such a big head start. This tells you that there are some headwinds out there. So we've got China pulling back. Now, personally, I believe that China was not going to see a rebound in their market until U.S. economic growth started to stabilize and increase. We should start to see some signs of that in the course of the next two, three, four weeks as states reopen and as coronavirus cases decline. So testing the 200-day moving average, we'd like to see FXI hold that level. Just keep an eye on what's happening on a global basis and then you'll be able to make more sense out of what's happening with our market. You can also see here that we've got this expanding range, this type of cone shape, and that means that we're experiencing greater price volatility. Well, we're right in the middle of it. Does that mean that we go way up, or do we come down here and test it and then run to the upper end of it? For right now, this spells uncertainty. This spells very low probability swing trading. If you are struggling right now with your swing trades, it means that you should really minimize your size, reduce your trade count, wait for some clarity. In the course of the next few weeks, we're going to start seeing some earnings releases. We'll have another quarter of profits under our belt. Valuations will start to come in line. We'll get to see what the guidance is for Q2. I will tell you that Q4, when they were starting to give guidance for Q1, very, very optimistic outlook. Lots of guidance was raised. So we should start to see some pretty decent profits rolling in this quarter. We also have the $1.9 trillion stimulus checks in hand. That money is going to get spent. Now there's talk of a one, uh, excuse me, a three 
$8 trillion infrastructure bill. That's going to be a tough sell. We've had about $9 trillion of stimulus since May of last year. So lots and lots of money printing. Our national debt is ballooning. $3 trillion is a huge amount of money. So we'll see what happens with it, but that is going to bode well for cyclical stocks. So let's take a look at the five-minute chart, see what the price action is today. And you can see there is the range for the day and the high and the low is inside of yesterday's range. So this is called an inside day. Expect choppy trading. Get a bullish 1OP cross right about in here, right in there. Yes, we get a nice little rally. We get a bearish 1OP cross right up here. Yes, that was a nice trade signal. Got a nice little bullish cross right in here. Yes, that will probably be a decent buy signal, but it's just chop back and forth. We're not going anywhere fast. If I look at this daily chart, my main theme for you today is do not chase. Do not feel like there's only one more train to catch. There'll be lots of opportunities for you to get long. We are not going to be go, go off to the races until our domestic economic growth starts to really bear some fruit. I think that could be a month or two away. You'll gradually start to see the bid grow and you'll see higher lows and a couple of long green candles in there. But right now, this is all a mishmash of green and red candles. One day we're up, one day we're down. Test the upside. As soon as the upside hits resistance, then we test the downside like this. Okay, we rallied up. Uh, nothing going there. Let's test the downside. Yeah, we took out the low. Okay, we got a nice little rally, made a new high. There's a double top lower high. Uh, nothing really going. Here we are on the low of the day. Okay, let's see if we can take out those buyers there with uh, some sell programs, trigger those sell stops, and then we get a weaker close. But this is not strong price action by any means. We are biding time. So that means... Keep your swing trades fairly small right now. This is a fairly low probability market environment for shorter term swing trades. I do believe that the bid is going to continue to grow over the course of the next few weeks. As we get closer and closer to earnings season, we're going to see buyers get more and more engaged ahead of that earnings season. So let's take a look at what we might have for trades. I'm going to keep the five minute chart up of the SPY in the background. And let's go through some of our searches here. I'm going to go through heavy buying. These stocks have greater than normal volume, plus a few other metrics that we like. You can see how CAT, C-A-T, has broken out above this downward sloping trend line on a D1 basis, on a daily basis. The stock is near its high of the day. Excellent relative strength, and we have good volume. This is going to be my pick of the day. And if I take a look at the options and how I'd like to play it, again, market chopping around. So we don't want to buy calls on something like this because it, the market could just sit here for another three or four weeks. In that case, time premium decay is going to be working against you. We want to flip those tables and we want time premium decay working in our favor. We'd also like to give ourselves a little bit of cushion so that if the stock does move around a little bit, if the market does move a around a little bit, we can let it do so without really having to fret over it. So if I look at a support level here, I like this support level right in here around that $210 price point. You can see how it dipped down there and bounced off of it. $210 would be the strike price I'd be looking to short. And if we go in and click on the 210 puts, this is the April 16th expiration cycle. There you can see the expiration date. So I click on the 210 puts. Those are the ones I'm selling. Buying the 207.50s, you can see that spread is 20 cents bid, offered at 37 cents. I like to get 50 cents for a spread like this because if the spread is successful, I will generate a 25% return in the next three weeks. And the premise for the trade is that the stock does not drop below this $210 price point. That is support. 
If that price point is violated, I need to buy the spread back in. If the market, for whatever reason, starts to break down and we're breaking the lower end of this upward sloping trend line or we're breaking the 50-day moving average, then I need to be very, very cautious because the character of the overall market is changing. But as far as CAT itself, it's going to benefit from a $3 trillion stimulus bill. Even if that doesn't happen, it's still going to benefit because we have a lot of basic material stocks moving higher. They have the bulldozers, the cranes, the dump trucks that are used in mining and even in energy if you look at the tar sands. So they're going to benefit from that. And I like the stock and its relative strength to the market. So as we continue to go down the list, AMAT. I really like AMAT. You know I like AMAT. I've liked it for a long time. But again, consistent with TLT being below 138, you have to hold off on this trade. There's your upward sloping trend line. Coincides with this horizontal breakout. Also comes into play with that 50-day moving average. On AMAT, I would want to try and sell a 112, 110 bullish put spread and bring in 40 cents. But not yet. I do like this breakout. You can see how the stock is moving higher to a new all-time high. And like Google, it is strong relative to tech. So when TLT goes above 138 and tech gains a bid, then we are going to see AMAT take off. So I do like that stock also. Continue to go through. We've had a lot of traders on this one today. Bullish flag formation right there. Was on heavy buying early today. They were in. There's a beautiful run right there. We've got a bullish flag formation right here. New high of the day. Good buy. Huge volume. Excellent. AA. We'll take a look at that. Another basic material stock. What do I do with that? I'm going to click on this candle right here. If it's able to get through that resistance, I want to know about it. Dow, also looking pretty good. Another basic material stock. I'm just going to keep an eye on these. I don't particularly like buying new highs of the day on a day like today. What do you mean by that and why? Because the market's not going anywhere. I don't know that we're going to get anywhere close to challenging the prior day's high right here but I'm going to drop an alert line on that right there just so that I'm aware of it. I'm also going to drop an alert line right here at the low of the day. This is the range that we are likely to stay between. So as the market gets up to this high, you're going to start to see some resistance. Most certainly, if it gets through this, it doesn't have far to go before it hits resistance here. So when you're buying the high of the day, there's not that much more headroom for the stock to run. So what you really want to do on stocks like this is you want to wait for that run, let that high be established. Uh, there we've got some selling, and now we're starting to see the bid grow. As soon as we get above this opening from this red candle, here I would feel pretty safe coming back into it. But as it gets to the high of the day, I'd be taking profits on it. You know, it might only be a 40 cent gain on a trade like this, but in a sideways market, you can't expect a lot. Now you're going to find a couple of real big runners like FNKO, but for the most part, if you're trading normal stocks, you're going to want to be taking profits near the high of the day. Uh, again, if you get some kind of news and you get a long green candle on S&P 500, then you can stick with the trade and ride it a little bit longer. Look for some very choppy price action today. That's all I've got for you. Keep your swing trades to a minimum for a little bit here. I think that with each passing week, we start to see the bid in the market grow. Thank you. Thank you for watching this YouTube video. I'm Pete Stolzers, and I'm going to keep the trade ideas coming along with lots of education. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and please turn on your notifications so that you never miss another trade. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. I've loaded two other videos that I think you're really going to enjoy. Stay tuned. We'll see you soon.